Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where the puzzle on the screen is called X Marks the Dots. This time, for obvious reasons, I can very rarely understand the titles, but this one I get. Uh, and it's by 2 to 10th. And I think we've done another puzzle by 2 to 10th on the channel before, which was called The Zeroth Law of Chromodynamics. And if I remember rightly, that was a puzzle where I was able to fill in all 81 digits in 14 seconds at the end of the end of the video because it was sort of such a chromatic festival and the entire grid got colored um i don't know if this one is a coloring one as well i sort of hope it is because i enjoy that sort of thing uh but i'll read you the rules in just a moment it's incredibly well rated on logic masters germany it's been suggested to us a couple of times as well and only three stars out of five for difficulty but what that means who knows? Yesterday's puzzle also had three stars out of five, and as one of the comments mentioned, it was by an astrophysicist. It took me about 50 minutes of really hard thinking. Um, so yeah, these, these ratings on Logic Masters Germany take them with a huge pinch of salt. Um, but before, before we get into the rules of this one, thank you so much if you've been trying jovial sudoku extravaganza over on patreon the comments have been out of this world um many of you seem to have spent your entire weekends working through all 20 puzzles there is no rush you have until the 20th of july in order to send in uh the final answer so you get the final answer when you finish the 20th puzzle um you send that to us and then you'll be in line to uh, or in with a chance of winning this beautiful crocheted cushion created for us by Anita Burge. Um, and uh, yeah, Anita goes by the name Alekin over on Discord. And I'm almost tempted to put my own name into the hat because I have solved all 20 of Jovial's puzzles. Um, but no, I won't do that. But I do think that this is just gorgeous. This is actually the actual first puzzle, the classic Sudoku um, that's the first of the hunt by Jovial. So really, really amazing stuff. Um, and if you haven't tried it yet, go over to Patreon and have a go right now. Uh, now that's all said and done. Let's get to the rules of this puzzle. What have we got? We have got normal Sudoku rules apply. Cells separated by an X must contain digits summing to 10. So those dominoes here, 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 and here. Six dominoes sum to 10. So those two squares, just make sure they add up to 10 and you'll be good to go. Uh, cells separated by a white dot must contain consecutive digits. So that's normal Kropke dots. Um, so that means that if that's a six, for example, this square would have to either be a seven or a five. Um, Cells separated by a black dot must contain digits with a 1 to 2 ratio, so normal black Kropke dots, and not all dots or X's are given. Right, so there's no negative constraint. So let's take a quick look at a black Kropke dot and think about how that works. You basically have to make sure that if you, if you put 4 in there, this square either then has to be 2 or it has to be 8. So you have to ensure that one of the digits is either half or double the other. That's how black Kropke dots work. And the fact that not all dots or X's are given means that it would be absolutely fine, for example, for those two squares to be three and seven, because although these add to 10, they don't need to have an X between them. It's just that these dominoes definitely do add to 10. So sort of positive information. And how lovely. I hear Maverick is just taking off, no doubt about to fly past and pay homage to 2 to 10th for the creation of this puzzle. Now, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And to be honest, my eyes are immediately drawn. Well, I'm wondering whether we need to talk about the secret. We often talk about the secret, but if you're new to the channel, you might not know what it is. Um, and the secret, of course, that is in any complete row, complete column, or complete box of a Sudoku. Because of the rules of Sudoku, you know what digits will be in those, those rows, columns, and boxes. All of the digits 1 to 9. Now, if you add up all the digits 1 to 9, you get 45, and that's the secret. So I know this row adds to 45 in total. That domino adds to 10, that domino adds to 10, and that domino adds to 10. So that's 30, which means these cells must sum up to 15. And you're right, that is as useful as a chocolate teapot. Sorry, um, no, that's not where we need to start then. Well, we can, yeah, we can determine the parity of this cell 
um, using, again, using the secret, but in a slightly different way, using a property of a white Kropke dot. Think about a white Kropke dot. Let's imagine this square was x algebraically. Then we would know this square was either x minus 1 or x plus 1. In other words, the sum of those two cells in the white Kropke dot is either 2x minus 1 or 2x plus 1. Well, 2x is definitely an even number. So once you take into account the minus 1 or the plus 1, this sum of these digits must be odd. So if those are odd, if that domino is odd and that domino is odd, we know these four squares together must add to an even number because that's what you get when you add two odd numbers together, plus another odd number. So now, we're, now all these six cells added together are an odd number. 10 last time I looked was an even number, so we're still on an odd number, and the whole box adds to 45, which is an odd number. So to preserve parity, this square has got to be even, and that means I have to color it in, and I have to color it in blue, I think, because if I remember rightly, odd is orange because they both begin with O. These are the sophisticated ideas we bring to the table on Cracking the Cryptic. So I'm meant to use blue and orange if I'm doing a parity puzzle. I have learned this from the comments over the years. Um, and this is therefore even and blue. And this is therefore even and... Yes, in fact, look at this. Look at box four where we've got exactly the same trick going on. We've got a domino, 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 each of which is adding to an odd number plus the even number. So this has got to be even to preserve parity. The same thing here. That's got to be even because of the, this box as well. So we've now got three evens in column three. And how many evens do we expect there to be in column three altogether? This is not a trick question. The digits 1 to 9 contain four even numbers, 2, 4, 6, and 8. So that's one of them, that's two of them, that's three of them. Think about that white Kropke dot. That must have one even number and one odd number. So the four even numbers in column 3 are contained within these five highlighted cells. So the rest of the column is orange, odd. They are all on white Kropke dots. So now column two is suddenly replete with even digits. Those have all got to be even. That is the full complement of even for column two. So all of those squares must be odd. That's on a white Kropke dot. So that must also be even. Therefore, I've now got four evens in box seven. So these have got to be odd and they're adding up to 10. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay. Oh, how strange. I had never appreciated that before. Why had I never appreciated that before? I had never appreciated that when you sum two digits in Sudoku to 10, both digits are either odd or both digits are even, which is obvious when you think about it, but I'd never really thought about it in terms of parity. So the moment we knew this was odd, we could have filled that one in as odd. So this is an odd and an even, we don't know the order. This is an odd and an even, we don't know the order. That's got to be even because it's a white Kropke dot that's attached to an odd. So that turns blue. And we have, well, I think we've got, we're left with ambiguity because these, each of these dominoes that we're left with contains an odd and an even number but the box is not going to tell us how they resolve. And the only thing that's going to tell us the ordering is going to be what's going on over on the right hand side of the grid. And you're right if you're looking at the right hand side of the grid thinking it's rather empty. We've not actually done anything, have we? Um, maybe we can do something with the... I'm wondering about the X's. Yeah, we can. We can. Let's think about these X's together because there are two ways for two odd numbers to add up to 10, either 1, 9 or 3, 7. So if let's imagine that was 1, 9. What do we now know about both of those X's? Well, we know these can't be 1, 9 pairs because that's going to break uh, this, this, this X relationship here. So each of these 
would have to be the 3, 7 alternative. And that means if this is 3, 7 and this is 3, 7, where does th these digits go in box 1? They have to go there. So this domino is like a hidden X domino. Um, but we don't know whether it adds up to 3, well we don't, we know it adds to 10, we don't know if it's 3, 7 or 1, 9. But may, I think I need to record this though. So these two are the same and they go in there. So we will give We'll give orange a purple flash and we will make that, which we know is not uh, purple, we'll make that green. So we've got green and purple colouring and I think that 2 to 10th would approve of this because I know 2 to 10th must love colouring because he created the zeroth law puzzle. Um, oh, now... Yeah, okay. Well, what is the digit you can never put on either an X domino or a hidden X domino for that matter, it's five, because if you put five in, you'd have to put another five to add up to 10. So where does the five go in box one? It's got to be there because five is not even. So it's not in blue. So now, ah, no, okay, we don't know, do we? I was, I was hopeful I would either know that this one was 5 or this one is 5, but I think either can still be 5. The 5 can still, I think, be in this domino in box 4, and that would place a 5 here. Oh god, there's a poltergeist today. The wind is whistling through my house and making the doors creak. Um, I think it's the wind. Um, hmm... Yeah, or that could be a five, and then you get fives down there. So maybe we don't know, but that is on a white Kropke dot. So those squares have got to be four, five, or six. Which actually isn't useful, I don't think, because it would have been useful if these had been blue dominoes adding to ten, because then we could have known that four, six would have been an impossible option. But they are not that. They are orange dominoes adding to ten. So, we've got to do something different. Ah, row four. Row four has two blues and two white Kropke dots. So, we know that this white Kropke dot is a blue and an orange, and this is a blue and an orange. So, the four blues in row four are in those six cells. So, the rest of the row, those two cells in particular, are orange. Orange on white Kropke dot must be joined to blue. Um, I've now got, oh, nearly, look, I've got three blues in row three. And this, this, these are our first excursion into the right side of the grid. But I'm not actually sure, or at least it's not obvious to me what else I'm meant to do here. Um... Oh yeah, it is. Okay, sorry. Let's have a look at row one of the grid because there's an interesting... Thinking about X's not having fives on them is quite a good question because you can't put fives in any of those six cells. Five is not even. You can't actually put five on a black Kropke dot because this square can't be ten or two and a half. So five has one place it can live in in this row and that's there and therefore that is odd and therefore this is even and it's four or six, which is almost interesting, look. So now we know with, we know there's an even in one of those two. So again, we've got sort of a three even cells in row two. Ah, and we get the parity of this square, look, because, again, this is from the secret, what we did at the very start. 30. Yes, we actually worked out those squares added to 15. Well, now with the 5 there, these two squares add up to 10, and this is even. So that's even as well in order to preserve the parity. Now that means this is... Oh, no, it's not. Bobbins, I thought I, thought I was going to say this was even because... No, but it doesn't have to be. If that's, if that's even and it's a 6, this would be a 3. In fact, if that's a 2, that's a 1. So what I was thinking there was complete nonsense. We don't know the parity of this square. We know this is blue. And 
Okay. Ah, what do we do now? Um, we know this is blue. We've got two more X's to find in row one. So one of these is going to be an even X and one of them is going to be an odd X. Do we know which is which is my question or not? And the answer to that is I don't know. Yeah, I do. I do know. Sorry. Right, let's think harder about box two. I was about to malign box two unfairly, but actually it's quite clever. In fact, it's very clever because I've now got two blues in there. I know that the white Kropke dot contains another blue. So these squares together are three blues. So this domino here, which is either double blue or double orange, is not double blue because if it was double blue, there would be one, two, three, four, five even numbers in box two, which is impossible. So that is orange. Therefore, this is blue. Now I've got four blues in box three. So it must be a whole complement of oranges to make that work. Now, oh, this is gorgeous. Right, look at this little cell being a four or a six. So what, how does this, this even domino that adds to 10 work? It's not four, six, that would break the square. That's gotta be two, eight which means these two squares are four and six. Now that might, no, it doesn't. I was gonna say that might fix the black croquis dot, but no, it doesn't. It means that this square has the option of being two, eight or three. Okay, that's absolutely hopeless. Um, I've got a four, five, six triple in box one. Oh, that is useful. Yeah, of course. If this is a four, five, six triple, what are these two squares? They've got to be two and eight because they're even and they're not four and six, which means I get a four, six pair at the bottom of column two, which means I get two, eight pair in row seven all out, out of nowhere. Um, now, this square is on a Kropke dot. So this is either. Oh, this has got lots of options, actually. Yeah, this is no good. This is either one, three or seven or nine. Oh, although it can't be five. Yes, good. That's a good question. So where does five go in column two? It's not in those three squares. It's not in these three squares because we know there's a five on this domino. So the five is in one of these three positions and it can't go on an X because then you'd have to double the five. So five goes here. This square is a four or a six. That creates a triple here on four, five, and six, which uh, I'm sure that means something, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. Um, so five has to be in one of those squares now, along with either three or seven. So these are three, five or seven. Ah, that's good. That's good. So how does this, this Kropke, not Kropke dot, how does this X domino work? Well, one thing it's not is three, seven, because that will force both of those squares to be five, which is impossible. So this must be one, nine, because it's odd. That means that's not one, nine. This, oh, this is gorgeous. Right, so now we've got ones and nines doing the rounds. In the, in the purple flashing, which means this is three, seven. This is one, nine. Uh, which I thought would give us lots of digits, but doesn't seem to have done that at all. Um, four, five, six here. No, it's not done anything, you rotten thing. Uh, okay. So until we know the ordering of this two eight, we don't know the ordering of the one nine or vice versa. So if this is two, this is three. If this is eight, this is seven. Um, golly, okay. Um, so what do we do now? 
That's the next question. We must have a 4 or a 6 in that square. That means that this square is either 3 or 7, because it can't be 5, look. So that's 3 or 7. This seems to have lots of options. Wow, this is, it's, it's really holding its head up, isn't it? It's not bowling over or, or giving up the ghost at all. Even though we've got, I, th I think we've done some decent logic so far. I'm still very confused as to exactly what we do next. So, there must be a 2 or an 8 on this white croppy dot. A 2 8 pair here. Is that affecting this black croppy dot maybe? Yeah, you can't put 4 on the black croppy dot anymore because it couldn't go with 2 or 8. Ah, yes, okay. This is a 3 6. Wow. Okay, this black croppy dot might be important. Oh, yeah, this is going to give us this digit. Yes, this is important. So let's double check this. This dominant or this black croppy dot cannot have a 2 or an 8 on it just by Sudoku. If you put a 4 on it, it would either have to go with 2 or 8, which is ruled out. If you had a 1 on it, you'd need a 2, which is ruled out. So this is 3, 6. I'm just noticing 3 in box 3 has to be in one of those cells as well. So 3 in column 9 can't go there, can't go here. has to be in one of those three squares. Could, could it still be on the black croppy dot? Perhaps. Um... But this 3-6 is giving us that digit, and that's a 7, which is giving us a 3-5 pair down here. It's forcing this now to be an 8, because 7 is definitely not consecutive with 2, so that's a 2. Now, that 7 is seeing a 7 and a 3 at the top of the grid. And now these two squares are just a 2-3 pair by Sudoku. So in this box, look, we've still got a white croppy dot to use. And we've used 1, 2, 3, 5 and 9. So you can't put 4 on this croppy dot, because if you did, you'd need the 3 or a 5 as its partner. So this is, this is from 6, 7 and 8. And if it's from 6, 7 and 8, it must have a 7 on it. And, no, oh, that's absolutely useless, sorry. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem to do anything. So we've got to think again. Um, so this is 2. We don't know if this is 8 or not. This could still be 6. Uh, or perhaps... Oh, it could still be 4 as well. Oh, goodness me. So this square's basically got lots of, lots of options. It's 4, 6 or 8. The only thing we do know is there's a 2 over there. But we don't know which way the parity goes. Good grief. Okay, <laughs> so what do we do now? Oh, maybe this row. Can we do something there? We've got effectively five digits placed. We need ones, fours, fives, and nines into these squares. So we will, we will pencil mark that and stare hard and hope that inspiration strikes. That can't be four. There's a four in the column. Um can't be five either there's a five in the column how can i see the four there and not the five that's actually there that's so strange so this is ah this is odd fantastic that's become an odd digit no i don't know if it does anything there must be a four and a five now over here which might be interesting This x can't be a 4-6 pair, but it could still be an odd pair. So this has still got three possible combinations, I think. It's either 1, 9, 3, 7, or 2, 8. It's, ah, it's not 1, 9, actually. If it was 1, 9, you'd only be able to put the digits 4 and 5 into those squares. And there are three squares, and you can't therefore put 4 and 5 only into them. So that's not 1, 9. So this is either 3, 7 or 2, 8. Which is almost really beautiful, but not quite. 
Um, okay, so where should we look now? <laughs> is there an obvious place that I'm missing? Probably is the answer to that. Um, or is there an obvious digit? I'm not a five. I should look five. I always think in these puzzles with X's in them, you should focus hard on fives. Let us think harder about fives. Fives have got to be over there. One of these three square, four squares, sorry. Can you put five here? No, actually you can't because that would have to be a four or a six, which it can't be. Five is locked into one of three positions now. Still, I don't see how we improve on that. Uh, five in box one is in this domino. Ah, five in box two is not on that domino. That's quite an, that's quite clever. Look, if if you put five on this domino, you know that the digits it'll attach to are either four or six. And now look what you've done to row two. You've broken it. You've got four cells that can only be selected from three different digits. So you'll end up having to repeat a digit. So there's not five in this domino, which means, ah, uh, ha, yes, here we go. That means where does five go in box two? It's not even, so it's in this domino. And if it's in this domino, it sees this square. So that square is not five, but we know that there was a five in this domino. So this is now five, five is odd. This is even. It's not done anything. <laughs> oh, it has done something small. No, I'm aligning it unfairly. There is a four, six pair now in row three. So these two squares are two and eight. That's a two or an eight. Which means what exactly? This square, therefore, I don't believe it. It's not even restricted. One, three, seven or nine. Literally all options are still on the table for this square from this being reduced to two or eight. Ah, but if you look at the row, I've got four evens now in the row. So these are both odd. Oh, this is ridiculously clever, this puzzle. Now look at box two again. These two are odd. Those two are odd. That's four odds. There's got to be an odd on a white croppy dot. That's all five odds. That means that's even. And if that's even, it's blue, that's the main thing, but it's also not three. And if it's not three, that's not six. So that's become a four out of nowhere, uh, which can still go with two or eight. That's not four though, that might be important. So that's come down to one, five or nine. Um, four gives us a digit there, that's a six, that's a four. That's a six. That's not six any. Ah, here we go. That six is ruled out of the white Kropke dot. So that's become seven and eight, which gives us that this square is a four. Which doesn't do anything. Um, I don't think. Let's think about this then. So. <laughs> got a 2-8 pair here. Oh, I don't like this. I think I've broken the puzzle. Oh, no, I haven't. Oh, thank goodness for that. I was noticing there had to be a 6 on this white Kropke dot, and for some reason in my head, I thought it, it couldn't go... Well, I knew it couldn't go with 5, and for some reason I wanted to then pair it with 8, which is complete nonsense. 6-7 is what's going to go in there few. Ah, and that resolves this. That's got to be four. That's got to be six. Although that doesn't seem to do very much. Um, and we don't know how the parity is shared there. But we do therefore know these two digits. They are a three, five pair look, which might be important. That means these are not three. So we've got a three in this domino. We've got lots of digits along this row. We still need ones, sevens, and nines into these squares. There's definitely a seven in this domino. And, right, and can we go, can we do any more magic now and get a bit further? 
That's the challenge. Um, and the answer is, I don't know. I have a feeling... I don't actually have much... Oh, blimey, the wind is definitely getting up. The weather is not good here in the UK today. Um, what do I do next? <laughs> Help! Uh, six here means that's... Ah, that square's got to be a seven, not a three. How long's that been sitting there? I don't think I've had that full six for that long, have I? So I'm going to forgive myself. So that's got to be a seven. That means this is not a seven. Here's a good bit of logic. Can that be a nine? If that's a nine, the puzzle is broken. Why is it broken? It's because you've got to put an eight in row row four. And the eight will have to live on a white Kropke dot. And if an eight is on a white Kropke dot, it needs a friend in a seven or a nine, which it cannot have. So this cannot be a nine. Um, this is a one or a three. That Right, so this now is not eight anymore. That's a two. That means that's an eight. That might be useful down there. That I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. I'm just focusing more up here at the moment. I've got... Um, I don't know if I can do more than that. Let's use this 8. I've now ruled out 2 8 from that. So this is now an odd domino adding to 10. It's a 3 7, so we get 3 here. We get 5 here. We get rid of 5 from there. I've got a 1 9 pair in this row. 1 9 is definitely an odd pair. These can't be 1s and 9s anymore. Let's get rid of the 4s and 5s in the corner. Um, don't know the parity on those, I don't think. So, what have we now got going on? I can place three, look, in row four of the grid. I've got threes here and threes here. So threes are not in this domino. Threes are not in these two squares by Sudoku. That's a three. These dominoes are now one, two, and eight, nine. So one of these is 8, 9. It's not, well, that's not 8, so that's not 9. And one of these is, one of these is 1, 2. One of these is 8, 9. This is resolved. Oh, that is, this is resolved. So that's a 9, that's a 1. That means we get a 1, 7 pair over here, which means we now know what this pair's got to be. That's got to be 3s and 9s. Which is nearly, nearly interesting, but maybe not quite. So, what do we do now? We've got a white Kropke dot here that we've not used. That's got to connect to this square. So it's, if it's a four, oh, this can't be a four. If this is a four, this square would either have to be three, which it can't be, or five, which it can't be, because the five would be there. So that is five, that's four. This square is there for... Um, obviously odd. That's obviously even. This square now can't be a 4, but must be consecutive with 5. So that's a 6, and that's even. The 6 sees the 6 and the 7 at the top. This is a beautiful puzzle, isn't it? It's so well constructed. It's not easy, mind you. Um, 7. Oh, nearly. There's a 7 in one of those two squares. There's a 5 in one of those two squares. Good grief. This is a 5-7 pair. So in this column, we need 1, 8, and 9 to finish it off. There's an 8 down here for certain. 1, 8, ah, 1, 8, 9. There's a 1, 8, 9 triple in box 8, which means that square is a 2. Which means this square is not a 2, so this square is not a 1. And this 6 is giving me a 6 there. That's giving me a 4 here. That's resolving the white Kropke dots. That's a 5. That's a 3. That's no longer a 5. Oh, so we did the work to get rid of a 5 from there, but this 5 would have just done it in one fell swoop. The 3 is giving me a 3 and a 7. Which might be important. I've got to put a 7 in that domino. 
and I've got to, ah, here's something interesting. I've got to put a four in that domino as well. I've got fours and sevens basically interacting. So if this is, well, this can't be four because it's on the white Kropke dot. If it's four, you have to put three there or five. Five isn't possible, three isn't possible. So that squares a seven. This is a four. This can't be a six because of the six in the column. So that becomes an eight. Eight gets placed in box uh, eight, appropriately enough. Um, we've got a one nine pair here. Eight and two and four and eight. Let's carry on doing our coloring um, to make sure that we're on top of that. I think I'm gonna get rid of the striping now because that's distracting me. Um, five and seven are definitely odd. One and nine is definitely odd. Two, three, four. Still, that still haven't really resolved that much in this box. I need to put two in here, which I think can go in all three positions. Oh, bother. Um, seven. That's giving me a seven and a one up there. That's locking one out of there, which is locked two out of here. Okay, still not actually solved the puzzle at all, has it? Um, what are we missing? I know I'm using we there, and I should really be what are, saying, what am I missing? But it makes me feel better not to target it myself too dramatically. Ones, twos, threes, and nines to complete this column. So this, oh, that can't be a nine because it's on a black crop dot. This is a one, two, or a three. So actually, let's fill in this column. Ones, twos, threes, and nines. That can't be three. So there's definitely a three up there, which we already knew. So this is one, two, or three. So this has no, this does not have the option to be eight, but it could still be one, two, four, or six. It can't be one. So it's two, four, or six, is it? Is it even? Is that what we're learning? I want to double check that. If this is one, that's two, that's fine. If this is two, this is one or four and it can't be one, so that's fine. If this is three, this is six, so that is even, okay. Doesn't seem to do anything though. Um, oh, there's something interesting. I've got four, five, six triples looking in this box, have I? In fact, four has to be in one of those two squares I've just seen. And these four squares together have to contain the digits four, five, and six. And that's interesting, I think, because, yes, it is interesting. It is interesting because, in fact, the way to think about this now, now we know four is in one of these two squares, is to say that of the digits five and six, one of them must be on the Kropke dot, or both, because we can't hide five and six in that domino anymore, um, because one of those cells is a four. So if one of the five and six is on here, let's think about what that means. If there's a five on this white Kropke dot, it can't go with the four, so it would have to go with the six. So if the five is here, we know it's as a five, six pair. But if the six is there, the seven is not available. So that has to still go with a five. So this is a five, six pair. That is gorgeous. And not that's not that easy, is it? Ah, that gives me a six here. That's a three. That gives me a three and a nine up there. So that gets rid of nine and that gets rid of one. Oh no, we already had got rid of one. Oh bother. I've now got a one eight pair here, so this must be a two or a nine. Um, this six is getting rid of a six from there, which in turn gets rid of a three from here. Ah, that place is three, if I trust my pencil marks, and why wouldn't I, in box jobby here, box six. Uh, that's got to be three, that's got to be two. Oh, of course, right. Once this is a one or a two, there's definitely a two 
on, on the black Kropke dot because it's either a 1 and a 2 there or this is a 2 and it would go with a 4 in fact there. So there's definitely a 2 here. That makes this the 9 which means that we must go consecutive. That's become an 8. This must be a 1-2 pair. There's definitely... and Ah, the 1 is giving me the 1 and the 9. This is giving me the 9 and a 1 and a 9 and a 9 and a 1 and that's not 9 anymore. So, in fact, where does 1 go in this box now? It's got to live on the black Kropke dot, which means there must be a 2 with it. That's now a 2 by Sudoku. Um, this 2 is giving me the 2 and the 8. We might be on the home stretch now, I hope. Uh, we need to put 1 in here. That's got to be there. 1 and 5. That still looks like it's working. This square here is a 4. And hopefully this 1 gives us a 1 and a 9. There's got to be a 9 in this column. It's now got to be here. There's got to be a 6 in the column. That's got to be there. That 6 looks nice. 6 and 5, 5 and 7, 7 and 8. 8 goes here. 4 goes here. And I know I've not done... I'll just click tick. Yes, it's right. Good. <laughs> and now, of course, I will complete the colouring because I know it will upset so many people if I don't. So those all turn blue. These can all be orange and that's a coloured version of the completed grid. That's just a brilliant puzzle. That is not easy either. It's taken me 40 minutes. A three star puzzle on Logic Masters Germany. There are a lot of very smart people solving puzzles on that website. Um, now what did I love about that? Many things actually. I, gen I generally enjoy these um, these sort of XV puzzles especially. And the interaction with the Kropke dots was lovely. Um, in fact, this is probably going to be something we'll think about for an app in due course. Um, because I just think XV is, is it's so much fun to solve. And you add a, throw a bit of Kropke into the mix, you can make all sorts of beautiful puzzles. Um, yeah, so we had to do a bit of shading, didn't we, to get even a foothold in the puzzle. And then... We had to do trickery with those dominoes. I remember that. Oh, I placed that five. That wasn't a, st a stupid thing to do. I can't really remember how things progressed from there. There was, But there was a lot of quite dense logic. Oh, there was something around, yeah, not being able to put a five on that white Kropke dot. That was very tricky. Yeah, it's just a whole sequence of deep deductions. Let me know how I got on <laughs> in the comments, only if you're kind though. Um, and thank you so much for watching. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.